I mean, how, how many cars per year, or I don't know how you keep track of that, but just how would you answer the question of how many cars do you sell? Um, I would say that we sell upwards of 500 cars every month. Um, to date, we're at 40, roughly 40,000 sold since we opened. And how do you normally handle complaints or issues? Um, they're all dealt with independently. It depends on what it is. You know, um, you know, obviously there's internal stuff and then there's external, but when it comes to the cars, um, they're all independently dealt with. They can talk to me, they can talk to any one of the sales managers, uh, even the owner. We're all, we'll all get involved. Um, I skipped one on my list. The, the, the general types of cars that you sell are what? All makes and models. Everything from new, used, predominantly all pre-owned. Pre okay. Yeah, there's there's a handful of 2019s that we have on the lot, but they're 2,000, 3,000 miles on them. So they're still considered to the banks are considered new, but to us they're pre-owned. So um, in, in general, you're a used car dealership. Is We're that... yep pre-owned used car dealership. Okay. That being said, what percentage of cars are sold as is? Every vehicle that we sell is sold as is. So what does that mean? As is, whereas, meaning that it comes in the condition that it's in. And that, and meaning if it had a problem, you're buying it with a problem? Or if it has a, an upgrade, you're buying it with an upgrade? Like, what, what does that mean a little and bit? It more? also means that if it's in great shape, that it's in great shape. Well, I, I was trying to give both sides yeah, of that. So. Yeah, so as is is the way it sits. I mean, there's no, um, there's no warranty or guarantee on it. It's a used, it's a pre-owned vehicle. Um, I don't know how else you'd like for me to kind no, of elaborate. No, on I mean, that. I mean, it, could you compare that maybe to a brand new car dealership? I mean, they sell their cars as is, but they come with more things because they're brand new. I'm just trying to... to yeah, to, I, I don't know what they come with. Um, and you still have issues with brand new cars. You'll have, you know, a car, a, a, a lemon buyback from a brand new car. So you, it doesn't, it's across the board. It's sold as is. Some of those come with the service contract, which is different than coming with the warranty. Um, then there's certified, certified pre-owned vehicles that are sold for quite a bit higher uh, than, but they're all still sold as is, whereas, meaning that they're sold in the condition that they're sold, that, that you're buying them. As they sit on the lot. As they sit on the lot, correct. Okay. In, 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 in other words, it's not all a cart. You can't say, hey, I want the tires off of this one. And, sure. You know, it's the way, it, the way it sits. How would you define the sharpest rides as a dealership? Um, we're a family-owned dealership. Um, we're about the customer. Um, we're a family for sure. I mean, there's, uh, you know, from the employees that are working there, we're all a tight-knit group of people from top to bottom. They've been there for a long time. You know, not, not a lot of turnover. Have you, I mean, you've been there since day one. Correct. Have you witnessed or been, or been privy to or just heard a lot of complaints against the dealership? Um, I see most of them, or I hear about most of them. And I can tell you that with the volume that we do, we're not, we're actually lower than most other places would be. Um, Lower you know, meaning what? I would just say a number of issues that come up. You know, when you sell 500 cars a month and you've got two to three issues on your desk a month, you know, that's a pretty low percentage of issues that are going on. When you, so you, you obviously have, have seen it and heard and de dealt with those. Those issues sure. come onto yeah, your desk. They come to cases. me, they'll come to Kevin, the owner, they'll come to one of the sales managers, they'll come to somebody. We ran an original story about a, a, a local vet who dealt with some issues not long after he bought a vehicle from you. Right. After that, we received more than a dozen email complaints. Okay. There are 29 on the BBB. Okay. The state has multiple on file. Sure. How do you respond to that volume of complaints? It's congruent with the number of cars we sell. You know, 29 at the BBB with 40,000 cars sold um, in comparison to dealerships that sell much less, maybe 100 cars a month, and they've got two or three, you're gonna have issues. That's just, it's a used car, it's got moving parts. It's, you know, people can, uh, 
you know, people do have issues with cars. In fact, I've had issues with my car, you know, but uh, it's just how you deal with those issues. The, the idea, though, that there are cars come with issues, used cars come with issues. Sure. Many of the complaints that we saw, though, were a week or two after I drove it off the lot, mm -hmm. the engine blew up. It no longer runs. Okay. They sold me a lemon is okay. what we hear a lot. Okay. How do you, what do you think about that? What I say to that is let us know what happened and let us show that we could take care of you. And uh, specifically, I know that you, we, you talked about a specific deal. And we paid many times to take care of people. Um, paid for motors, paid for transmissions, paid for deductibles on warranties because we're here to take care of the customer. That's our job. You know, uh, repeat and referral, that's what we want. But should you be selling cars that have problem after problem after problem in the first place? You don't know. If, when you drive it, when it comes into the lot and you drive it and it's got the oils good, the radiate, the tires are good, it's not overheating when you check it out and something happens in a week, I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody does. No dealer, no new car dealer, no used dealer has a crystal ball and can say, this is what's going to happen in a week or this is what's gonna happen in two weeks. It's what you're gonna to do to take care of that situation. And uh, I think we do a good job of that. To that end, many of the, the BBB complaints were responded to by a member or somebody from the Sharpest Rides. Didn't have a specific name. Yeah, specific I'm not name, sure but who it, responded to all but those. But they've, they've all been, been responded to, but in many of those cases, the original complainant comes back and says, they quote unquote reject using the BBB's terminology, those complaints, because many of these complaints are answered, but then not resolved. According to the people, they answer back and say, no, I did call and nobody picked up the phone or it took a month and then they wouldn't pay for it or they refused to pay for it, things like that. So yeah. it, it, it seems almost, according to many of the people that we've talked to, as a pattern yeah. of cars breaking down and then not only not fixing it, but running into issues fixing it. Okay, and that, that's fair, okay? But you can still see times when there's parts that are on national back order. Um, there's times when the warranty company has to approve a claim uh, with an adjuster that might need to come out, might go to a third party to be fixed. Um, you don't put a new motor into a used vehicle. So sometimes when you get a used motor, you put it and you find out that there's issues with it. Um, and then you do what you need to do to take care of that situation. Um, in particular, I can name one where we put two motors in. Second motor we paid for their deductible. So for 100 bucks for buying a warranty, customer got two motors put in their car to rectify the issue. And that, that can happen. Um, and if there's 29 of those out of 40,000, you know, some of those have been rectified and have been fixed where people don't go back and amend their complaint, their initial complaint, or they'll come in specifically or speak with me. You know, we'll, we'll talk specifically about their situation, solve it, and it may not get back out there because bad news is easy to post. Good news isn't always easy to post. But in one of the, one of the people that we've talked to that I believe you're referring to, when someone's on their third motor in a vehicle that they bought pre-owned but not I mean, it wasn't a junker. It wasn't bought off somebody's front lawn. When somebody buys even a pre-owned car, I would think that they would expect not to have to go through three motors. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I wouldn't either. But it's what you do to take care of that situation. And we are paying the deductibles. You know, I didn't make the used motor that was shipped to us to put in the car. Okay, it got put in the vehicle. It turned out to be bad. We reorder another one, make another claim pay for the customer's deductible, and do what we can to take care of the situation. A lot of dealerships don't do that. They'll just say, hey, it's sold as is, whereas, have a nice day, take care. We don't do that. In any situation? Not any situation. Sometimes they can be neglected. Cars can be neglected, or people do things to cars. They get in an accident. You, know, you never know. Every situation's independent. You can't just take it across the board and say, this situation I'm going to fix, that one I'm not. Just, you have to listen and see what people, what's going on, you know. But do you end up f having to fix a, a large percentage of the cars that you sell people? No. No, sometimes it's just, they're out of gas. 
You know, I've had customers that come in and say, my car broke down, it doesn't work, and it was out of gas. Or it had a bad battery. You know, something that you can't foresee. There's a lot of things that, in a used car that you can't foresee. And it, when those situations happen, it's how you deal with it. That's what defines a good dealership, is how you take care of the problems. But wouldn't some people say a good dealership is someone who sells me a car that I won't have to fix? Yeah. Yeah, I wish that were the case, but every pre-owned dealership that you go to down anywhere in Colorado will have issues with the car that they sell, period. That's just how it works. The Lemon Law, I know that you, you refer to that, that applies only to new cars or cars. From what I understand, yeah, I'm not yeah. a lawyer or anything, but from what I understand, it's from a new car. But that's the word that's being thrown around. People okay. are accusing your dealership of selling lemons. Okay, that's not what we sell. We don't we yeah we don't work we're, we're not in the business to sell somebody a bad car it's what you do after you find out that there's an issue if there's an issue that comes up you take care of it we're not we're not over here selling lemon cars it's just not something that any dealership would open their doors to sell do you think that these people that are that are lodging complaints against you are i mean it it, do, it doesn't sound like you're saying that they're not telling the truth. They're just dealing with what it is to, to buy a used car? Um, to a degree. I mean, anybody can have a car inspected as well before they buy it. Um, and even then, you can. there's issues that are going to come up. It's a pre-owned vehicle. It's got moving parts and oil, and things happen over time. Nobody has a crystal ball, as I mentioned earlier, to say, hey, this is gonna happen. If I know something's gonna happen to somebody in a car that they buy from me, if I knew that, I wouldn't want that to be sold. I don't want to sell somebody a problem. I want to sell them a car that they can buy and drive. That's every dealer out there. Nobody wants to sell a car that's gonna have issues with somebody. We'd rather focus our energy on selling vehicles and fixing them, but that's just part of the deal. And so when you have issues, you deal with them. What is done before a car is sold? When, wherever you get it from, I'm assuming some of them come from auction and things some like that? Some of them come from auction, some come from uh, trade-ins, it just depends. You know, some of them come to us uh, being sold with the sale guarantee on it, already having been checked out at the auction. Um, but we drive all of them to make sure that there's, the tires are good, make sure that the oil's, you know, solid, but you can't take a, transmission apart you know you can't take a motor apart right I mean it doesn't make sense to take 900 cars and peel the motor open on all of them or take the transmission apart on all of them to certify it say hey it's good to go I, I promise you nothing's gonna happen that's just not the case so you drive it you check the oil you check the tires is it does it go through any kind of 180 90 point inspection before it's sold they don't go through a specific 180 or 200 point inspection. That's a pre-owned certified vehicle that goes through that. Um, but safety, you've got your seat belts, you've got your radials, you know, the things that are gonna cause an issue as far as safety is concerned, those are addressed. Is, is how you operate when a car is rolled up onto your lot as far as what you do before you sell it different from any other dealer? Uh, pre-owned dealer? I, I would say that we're pretty normal compared to other places, just the volume. We have a lot of cars that come in and, you know, people, when they see a vehicle for sale, they'll come in. And if it hasn't gone through its ins this complete inspection, right, we'll tell them, bring it back and we'll be happy to have that done. Okay, if the oil's dirty. In fact, on the buy here, pay here's deal that we were discussing earlier, Bring it back every 3,000 miles. We'll be happy to look at it. This investment's between both of us. We don't want you in a bad car. So, so bring it in, we'll look at it and see what's going on so that the longevity is there. And you've said, you know, those two or three a month complaints end up on your desk or the owner's desk, et cetera, out of, yeah. out, of, out of 500 cars. Um, and yes, that percentage is low, but for the people that are driving it, that in many cases, their only mode of transportation. So. Sure. Obviously, they have some serious qualms about sure. this vehicle that you Absolutely. sold. Absolutely, I would too. 
I would too. It's how you deal with that. It's how you take care of that customer. You know, we don't want any more out of pocket for these people. You know, we offer them a warranty every time that we sell a car, you know, so that can help with costs if anything happens down the road. Because when is it okay for there to be a problem? Is it a week? Is it two weeks? Is it a year? You know, when is the dealer not responsible for something that went wrong with the car? Okay. Um, but as a dealership, we're like, when did it happen? What happened? Um, did you buy a warranty? We have a service department. Let's see what we can do to resolve the problem. That's, that's the ultimate goal. It's not the problem, it's the solution. And that's what we work towards. You said you sell about 500 cars a month? Roughly. Yes. About how many cars do you fix a month? Um, what do you mean fix? Cars that you've sold. But what is it fixing? I mean, you, you, we'll, we'll put a headlight on one, we'll put a light bulb on one, you have a visor that no, doesn't car, work. No, cars that you've already sold out that then come back to be fixed. How many of those a month do you fix? That, what do you mean by fixed? So, so, so you, you sell someone a car, okay. and then a month later, the oil gasket or something goes okay. on it, okay. and they bring it back. Okay. How many of those situations, different cars, that you have sold are brought back to you to be repaired per month? Uh, it's, it's hard to say, but it's not a big number. And it's usually something small. Um, you know, it could be a check engine light that came on for a gas cap. Um, it could be a low voltage battery. Um, it could be a multitude of s typically small things that could be a motor. It could be a motor, absolutely. And if it's a motor, then you address it like you do any other situation. So as of as of us sitting here right now, you know those complaints are out there. You we you know in talking to you, we know how many how many you sell. Mm -hmm. Is the dealership doing anything wrong? We do business the right way. The dealership's not doing anything wrong. We're here to take care of the customer and provide a service. Who's at fault? For those complaints nobody nobody's at fault for the complaints there's something that comes up with a the car they're bringing it to us and we address it there is there is mentioned several times in many of the bbb complaints and some of the other complaints that we received also via email because you've, you've multiple times referred to these are used cars they break we fix them and we it's it's what happens when you when this hap when they break that really kind of defines, I guess you'd say, you know, who a dealer is and, and how they operate. Right. Many of those, com many of those um, complaints include complaints against either a lack of or a complete disregard for customer service. Is, are you responding in the right way when these complaints happen? I'm not responding to all of those. I'd like to see some of the ones that you're talking about. Um, I can tell you that for every five, you know, three to five complaints that we have, there's hundreds of positive reviews, hundreds. In fact, it outweighs the negative. Um, but again, it's, you know, we're talking about break. I don't know if we're discussing major issues or we're talking small issues, but I think what defines our dealership is how we deal with the issues after the fact. Um, that's the bottom. That's the bottom line. There's a lot of places that have gone out of business because they just don't care. They take the as is, whereas, to the bank, and they buy a car, and they say, have a nice day. If something happens, it breaks in two, you own both halves. That's just not how you do business. So, as then as we sit right now, you've said the dealership is doing nothing wrong, no one's at fault for those complaints no plans on on changing how you're doing business well we always want to look to improve i mean every every company every you this place everywhere we all want to improve in what we do you know nobody wants to have to stay stagnant in the business just like with you guys with every other new station out there you have to compete and in, in order to compete you have to grow in order to grow you have to challenge yourself and look at what you're doing and the policies and procedures and the things that you do and so every day, that's what we're doing. And not just with the sale of vehicles, but with every other facet of the company. We're looking to improve and get better. The one uh, 
anecdote that, that I was told in reference to um, by, by a customer who had filed a complaint um, who had been in multiple times. Um, he said that the, the tow truck driver who picked him up, who picked up his vehicle and took it to the sharpest rides multiple times after blowing an engine, et cetera, the tow truck driver said, the sharpest rides keeps me in business. He does five to six tows a day to your dealership. Is that acceptable? I can't speak to that. I don't know the facts behind it. I'd love to see that. That's what we that, that's what we were told. That's what we were told. Out to, I, to I'd love to see what the facts well. are. Yeah, sure. I'd like to see thirty toes being done every week. That's not. That doesn't happen. Into thirty toes. Sharp is right. From one individual. I'd like to see that. I doubt it. What would you like to to add to get out there? Something I haven't specifically asked or, or addressed. Maybe you know. I mean. Uh, as, as a part of uh, as a part of this, the way you do business, how you operate, anything about our store specifically. Sure. Just yeah. No. Uh, well, and anything that you'd like to put out there. This is kind of something that I forgot. Any uh, your your kind of uh, soapbox, uh, if you will. Okay. Um, nothing real crazy. I mean, you know, the dealership, any used dealership, is not out to sell a bad car. Nobody's going to open their doors and go through that process. Um, that includes the surface rides and that includes any other dealership that's out there. Um, it's how you deal with situations because they come up in the family and with a car, with whatever. Problems happen, you know, airlines cancel flights. It's how you deal with it. That's why you either go back to United or you don't. And our goal is to have you come back. And we want you to tell people, you know, refer them and have repeat, which we have a lot of, about 70% of our business is repeat and referral. And we're proud of that. Sure. All right, um, anything else? That's Maybe it. that I forgot that you'd like to add? That's it, all right. Sounds good, well thank you so much